<laughs> well, no America, I mean, I guess since I've seen, uh, seen you all last, can't, yeah, thank you. Since I've seen you all last, I guess it was 2003, uh, Worldwide Underground, New America is uh, my perspective of what's been going on in the world since I've seen you last. Um, New America is right here. Uh, everything you saw visually, everything you heard sonically, that's what New America is. It was my own. So, um, now it's my point of where I am right right now. And as I could uh, direct my own paradigm shift and see everything going on around me, you know. New America Part One, Fourth World War is um, the, the mental aspect of, of where I am. Part two, Return of the Ankh, will be the, the spiritual aspect or the uh, emotional aspect of where I am. It comes out in July. So this is a total mental project, part one. You know, I hope I answered your question. Well, it started with a concept that I, you know, I wrote a, a treatment for honey. Uh, treatment is like a, you know, pretty one-page synopsis, two-page synopsis you write about the story. I just wrote a story out. Chick walks in the record store, picks up a record, and it superimposes into the record, and it becomes uh, these albums. I chose the albums based on albums that I grew up listening to in the 70s that had that frequency vibration that I really love a lot. Um, and you know, it was, I love one take videos. I directed a video um, a few years ago called Other Side of the Game where it was just one camera, one shot. I love one shot, gorilla cam, steady cam uh, kind of uh, videos. It says so much because it takes you to the person's point of view, like what they're seeing. And that's what I wanted this video to be like. Uh, it, really easy. it was one of the easiest videos that I've ever directed in my life. It was just a one steady cam and green screen. The post-production was, uh, was a lot of work. You know, I learned a lot in effects this time around because I've never done anything so elaborate with effects as far as making the albums come to life and putting plastic in front of them and a sticker in front of it and, and making the album look exactly uh, color-wise and layer-wise like the album that I was emulating. So I must say I learned an awful lot from, from that and I hope to um, you know, to you know, come up with something as exciting and even more elaborate in, in effects, you know, next time. I made an announcement right before the song about it. His mom, right? Yeah, his mom told me the story about um, him going incoherent for a little while and uh, talking to ODB, you know. ODB would come to them and they would have conversations just like you and me, right. except nobody else was there. <laughs> and and uh, afterwards she would um, she would ask him who he was talking to, you know. You know the story. He was a scientist, a master of his craft. He could take a sample and uh, make that sample into an instrument and that style has been repeated and perpetuated and, and played over and over like a mantra in hip hop music. You know, that's that's where hip hop music is right now. You know, J D is a, a legend and his, his music lives on. It's so surprising about the album. It's so thick with great pieces. And in some ways it's it sounds like it's the hardest album you've ever done. I wanna know what you talk about I think it's great bass in this room. <laughs> uh Bobbyism was hit kinda of hard too, you know. Uh, uh, that's a bass is like uh the, the, the conga drum to me, you know, bass and the kick and the snare, that's, a, that's the main focus of, of, of the music to me. And thank you for noticing that uh, and saying, bringing that up. Um, the, the producers that I work with this time around, that's, they're responsible for that. And I'm responsible for the freak of it, for the frequency of it, you know, the lows and the highs and the sonic sound of it. But those are the patterns that, that um, that I was feeling and I chose the same kind of beat over and over again. And that beat makes me want to do a chant or a mantra over and over again. That's where a lot of the songs, uh, that's where a lot of songs are. So I agree with you. It's, it's my magnum opus. I feel that it's the album I wanted to make all of my life. I know uh, that you mentioned that you produced a track 10, the telephone track. 
And I've also heard that you did a lot of the, the interludes on, in GarageBand yourself. Mm -hmm. How involved did you fully get into the musical production of this album? Well, the same as every album. You know, I'm a control freak to the end. And I don't see anything freaky about controlling your own image, right. your own music, your own life, your own style. Um, every single song that I uh, write uh, has me in it because it's my uh, experience from my perspective, from my seat. Um, with this particular album, I produced this one quite differently than I did the, the other the other four. Is it four? The other four. Um, with this one, I had a baby in 2003, no, 2004, and I took off time, as I always do for the children, to breastfeed and to nurture and to get my health back together. And it would have took a lot longer for this album to come out had it not been for technology. Uh, I was given a laptop for my birthday in 2005 and um, got introduced to uh, the buddy list <laughs> of, of uh, what do you call it, iChat. And all the people on the album are buddies on my buddy list who sent me MP3s saying, come on, E, come on, let's do this, come on, E, come on, let's do this, you know. Uh, from from J Electronica to um, um, Kareem Riggins to um, Dilla to um, Madlib, Sara, all of these guys, they were sending tracks and encouraging me to go forward. My son, actually, who's now 10 years old, taught me how to drive, drag it in a garage band. And um, so, Mom, you can, all you gotta do is put the track right here. You can sing your ideas. You don't have to hum it and try to remember it and sing it all into your answer machine. It's t all you gotta do. All you gotta do is sing right into the thing. It's a little mic right here. Just sing it and see. I was like, oh, stop. And before uh, three, four months was done, I had about 50 something songs. I had to separate them into ideas. Just New America Part One, Part Two, and uh, Low Down Loretta Brown, and Mama's Deuce Deuce, which is after Low Down Loretta Brown. So it's kind of like I got money in the bank. I mean, I have songs that are written um, because it, it took away all of the uh, hassle of trying to get to a studio and get an engineer and having to figure out how I'm going to pay for it and this and that. I, I can even be on the road doing what I love best. I'm a, I'm a, uh, what do you call it, a performance artist first, I'm a recording artist second. You know, what I do, I love to entertain and perform. I don't like really being a celebrity, but I do like the aspect of performing. And I enjoy that, and um, it gives me, uh, you know, the energy. So when I found time and have uh, relevant things to say, at the same time, this computer came into my life and all this stuff, and it just is overflowing. My cup runs over. And I'm blessed and highly favored. And it, it feels so good to uh, be back in the world, you know, with, with this kind of uh, music and this kind of light. This is my magnum opus, you know, so I feel good about that. I just want you to get it, you know, and then what you do with it is, is what you do, but just get it. And I think I speak for many artists when I say that, you know. Um, I never ask anybody if they like it. I only ask them how it makes them feel. You know, so just get it and feel, you know. I think we're so numb right now and so complacent as human beings because of the main three things we need to take care of, you know, food, clothing, and shelter. And being on the hustle to do that, we really lose focus and contact with, with who we really are, you know. It's an opportunity for you to feel. And I, I hope everyone takes advantage of it. Many people, it's possible. Because we coming. <laughs>